This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back with another Avid Media Composer 101 tutorial. Now in this case, it's not going to be a traditional lesson. We're actually gonna be taking a look at the new features in the 8.2 update for Avid Media Composer. Now, like I said, we're gonna be looking at the main features, but we're not gonna be looking at all of the small little bells and whistles that may be updated. So what I encourage you to do is once you've downloaded 8.2 of Avid Media Composer, is check out the what's new documentation that will give you all of the major and minor bells and whistles that have been updated in this very exciting version update for our favorite non-linear editing application. Okay, short intro, let's just get into Media Composer 8.2 and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer. And right away, you're gonna notice something very different about the project selection window. As you can see, it has now been completely streamlined to now give us more information, what we really need to know about these projects before we get in and start working on them. Before, the way it was was we'd have the project name and we really wouldn't have any information over here on the right-hand side. As you can see at the top, we still have the user that's me and the user profile. We still have private, shared, and external projects and the location of our external projects. But down here in the actual project selection, what's gonna happen is as I go through and choose different projects, you're gonna see that I now get a lot more information as to exactly what is the details of this project. For example, it's a 1080i 5994 project. It also tells me the video color space, the raster dimension, and whether the stereoscopic 3D features have been turned on. This is a fantastic, great update for the project selection window because you know what, it never hurts, especially if you're new to Media Composer, maybe you've got a bunch of projects that are called something similar, and you need to get an, oh, was I working in the 23976 version? Was it, you know, the 720p version? Or was it the 1080i version? The project window is now going to give you all of that information right in front of you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna choose my what's new in 8.2 project. I'm simply gonna say okay. Now, right away you're gonna see up in the project window something looks a little bit different. You'll see that we now actually have a search box up here. Well, what is that search box for? Well, this is a way that you can quickly get in and filter through any search item that you might happen to type in here. Now, you'll see that if I twirl down my folders, I've actually created bins all called the same things in each one of my audio, clips, graphics, and sequences. I've called yellow, red, purple, green, and blue for sequences, graphics, clips, and audio. So for example, if I only wanted to see all of the bins that have been tagged with red in them, all I need to do is simply type in red and it will only show me those bins that I've tagged up here with red that have red in the name. Very, very handy, a great new feature. Now, I'm gonna show you probably my favorite feature inside of the 8.2 update. Now to do that, I actually need to switch projects. So let me just do that right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come down to the Rampant Design Tools project. I'm simply gonna say, okay. Now I wanna talk about the favorite bins feature. Now before I talk about the favorite bins feature, I do need to show you that there has actually been an update to the bin setting right here. If I come into the bin setting, I can actually come right here and say, show me the favorite bins at the top of the project window or vice versa at the bottom of the project window. Now for me, I wanna keep it at the top of the project window. I'm simply gonna say, okay. Now the reason I chose the Ramp and Design Tools project is because there is a bin in here of elements that I know that I'm gonna use in just about every project that I'm working on. You'll see I've got these very cool flash transitions. And like I said, this could really be anything. This could be bars, tone, and slate. It could, in this case, it could be transitions. It could be effects that you use. And you know, it's one of those things where you're always, you know, you create a new project. Oh, I'm gonna be using those 4K flash transitions. I have to open that bin in this project. I would really rather have them there all the time. No problem. All we need to do is simply select the bin so that it's active. I'm gonna navigate up to bin and right down here at the bottom, I'm simply going to add that bin to my favorites. Now, as soon as I do, you're gonna notice, now in this case, I happen to be in the Ramp and Design Tools project, but you'll see that if I drop this down, I have the 4K flash transitions right here, but let's switch back to my Avid What's New in 8.2 bin. Let's just open that. And you're gonna see now that at the top of the project, I now have that bin from the Ramp and Design Tools project that will now always open at the top of every project, whether it's a current project or a new project, that I happen to be working on, a fantastic feature that I guarantee you I'm gonna be using all the time. 
Okay, now another great new feature inside of Media Composer 8.2. And before I show it to you, I'm going to come to the settings because you're going to notice that inside of your settings, there's actually a new setting called Appropriately Enough Media Cache. Now, what does Media Cache do? Well, basically what Media Cache does is it's going to let you take the thumbnail views from your bins. Now, in this case, I'm just going to open 4K flash transitions. They all start out in black, but you get the idea. And what it's going to let you do is it's going to let you cache all of these thumbnails. So if you happen to like to work in thumbnail view, in Instead of Media Composer having to rebuild this view every time you relaunch the application, these thumbnails are going to be stored or cached onto a local drive or to an external drive of your choosing. Now what I'm going to do is just close the bin here for one second because if I come back to settings, we come down to media cache, you'll see that I've set my media cache to be actually on an external, uh, an external volume, my Mac drive here, because by default it's set to an internal drive on your machine. So keep that in mind. You can basically get in, set it to an external drive, flush the cache, and then set it. And what's going to happen, you'll see that if I hide Media Composer, I come to my Mac drive, I come down to MC cache right here, you'll see there are all the thumbnails that have been cached for just that one bin. Now for me this is not really a big feature because I don't normally work in thumbnail view, I normally just work in list view, but I know many editors out there like to work with those thumbnails and this is a huge feature, especially if you're dealing with bins that have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clips in them. Okay, next new feature inside of Media Composer 8.2 is an updated search feature. Now to do a search inside of Media Composer, very simple. Simply press Command and F on the Mac, Control and F on Windows to call up the Find window. Now in the past you're accustomed to getting in and searching for clips and sequences or script type or timelines, but you're now going to see that we have a new option in here called appropriately enough markers. Now in this case the last thing that I searched for was everything called green. So what I'm going to do is something slightly different. I'm going to say, oh, Okay, well for this search, show me every clip that I have a marker in that I've tagged as red. Now I've called it red as the name of the marker, not the color. So when I say find, it's going to show me the three markers that I have inside of one clip right here called red. You'll see red locator 1, red locator 2, and red locator 3. Now what's important to keep in mind is remember, I called the actual marker red locator 1. It's not looking for the actual color. So for example, if I was to type in, uh, let's type in yellow, you'll see that I don't have anything tagged as yellow, but if I type in blue, you'll see that I have three locators called blue, and going back to what we had done before, if I type in green, you'll see that I have four locators located over two different clips that have been tagged as green. And of course what you can always do is simply just double click on what's in the results window to simply call that clip up now at the time bar exactly at that locator inside of your preview window. Very cool. Okay, now I've saved probably the last big new feature to last. Are you ready for it? background rendering. Yes, that's right. We now have the ability inside of Avid Media Composer to simply render effects in the background. Well, how do we do it? Well, it's actually very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to come to the clips bin and I have some clips inside of my blue clips bin. Let's just take some oil rigs here. I'm just going to mark it in and out point. We're going to drop it into a new sequence just like such. All I'm going to do is simply hit Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows to call up the effects palette. I'm just going to come down to Blend and I'm just going to choose a 3D Warp. All I'm going to do is simply take the 3D Warp, drag and drop it onto a clip, and let's just give it a slight rotation here. Why don't we actually adjust its scaling here, and we'll just bring it smaller, and we'll just rotate it a little bit, just for kicks. There we go. Okay? What a, you know what? For kicks, why don't we just animate it here? There we go. Okay? And let's just rotate this. There we go. Cool. So let's just say hypothetically this was a clip that required rendering. So all I'm going to do is simply press Shift and F2, which is my shortcut to render. You'll see now that I have the option called, specifically enough, run in the background. I'm just going to select it. I'm going to send this to the Mac drive and I'm going to say OK. And what's going to happen, you'll notice up here in the upper right hand corner is my Avid background services have started going. I'm simply going to open the background queue and you're going to see now that what's happening is is that this clip is now rendering. Now obviously the time of your render will vary based on a few factors obviously including how many things you send to the render queue but basically what's going to happen is, is that in my case in a matter of seconds we now have that clip in our timeline rendered 
and ready to go. And of course, the most important thing to keep in mind, and what I'm just gonna do here is, let's just remove this. I'm just gonna add another one here. Um, let's just choose a, we'll just come down to our illusion effects. Let's just add some film grain. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this to the background here. We'll just do Shift F2. I'm just gonna run this to the background. Of course, you can see that inside of the render queue, once it pops up here, pardon me, into the background queue, once it pops up, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hide the background queue, there it goes, and I'm now gonna go back and just keep editing as per normal, and what's gonna happen is, is that in a matter of seconds, that clip is gonna be rendered and ready to go in my timeline. And as you can see, there we go. Okay, so these are the main new features in version 8.2 of Media Composer. Like I said, there are a few more, and I encourage you to check out the README file for all of the details. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.